Today is the fourth day of the Zanzibar International Film Festival 2016 and we have had the opportunities of meeting several filmmakers and directors and even actors but this afternoon we're honored to have Davidson who is a filmmaker from South Africa who has something to tell us. Davidson, welcome to Tanzania and Zanzibar in particular. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here in Zanzibar. And my name is Davison Mudzingwa, the director of Lost Tongue. I live in South Africa and I'm happy to be here. Well, what is this? We watched the movie the other day and uh, what is this Lost Tongue all about? Anyway, maybe if you can tell viewers out there. Lost Tongue, as its name suggests, is a documentary about a language that is near extinction. And this language is called Ngu. And Ngu is a language that is spoken by the Komani San people in the Kalari Desert on the South African side. So it's only three elders that are left that can speak this language in the Kalahari. And this is astounding enough that out of a whole group of people, it's only three elders that can speak a language. And the, la and the youngest of those elders is 84 years old. And we consider this as urgent. It's an urgent issue. Because language is a conduit to culture. It's a conduit to identity, to the way of life, to values. So we thought this is something that people needed to watch, to know the agents of this specific issue in the Kalahari. But also, it applies to everyone in the world. We are slowly losing our languages. We are slowly losing our cultures. We are slowly losing our values as people around the world. Where was this particular film shot? This film was shot principally in the community of Andresville in the Kalahari Desert in South Africa in the Northern Cape. And this is a part that is just near the border or it borders Namibia and Botswana. Because you know Kalahari Desert is shared between these three countries, Namibia, Botswana and South Africa. So we filmed on the margins of the border of Botswana and Namibia but on the South African side. But also we shot in the nearest uh, town of Uppington in the Northern Cape Province and also Johannesburg and Cape Town. Do you think the film achieves its objective in, in the process? From, we believed when we made it that this film will resonate with the people across the world. It was a film that speaks on what every human being yearns for, an identity, a name, a culture, a language. So from where we have shown this documentary people have come out genuinely speaking with grace with sincerity on how they loved this film and how it reflects into their own lives like a mirror it reflects into their lives like when I watched this documentary I started to ask my own self my, myself own questions about my own identity am I doing enough to, pres to preserve my own language am I doing enough to preserve my own culture we premiered in New York in March at the social relevant film festival and we were surprised that after that we received an award, a Women Film Critics Circle Award, because they believed this was a universal story. And we also showed in Canada at the Rio Heart International Film Festival, and we were the second place best documentary in Canada. And we believe this is testimony enough, because this is far from Africa where we shot the documentary, and we are receiving this accolade because they believe the film is universal and resonates with every human being across the world. Do you think this is a, a crisis? How is the, are we at that level where we're facing an identity crisis? It's a serious crisis. Uh, the UN through UNESCO say if nothing is done about languages, by the end of this century, over 3,000 languages would die. And that's chilling reality. Just to have that prospect that languages will die, more than 3,000 languages will die by the end of this century, it's a crisis enough. But as I said at the beginning, language itself, it's a career of culture, it's a career of values, it's a career of identity. So imagine if 3,000 languages die, what amount of culture is, 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 is dead? What amount of identity is dead? It's so, it's so sad. And I can give a, something closer to home. You realize at the moment some African families, they speak amongst themselves. We think it's intelligent, 
or is cool enough to speak to our kids in English or in Francophone countries, the so-called Francophone countries, is cool enough to speak to their kids in French more than their own native language. That alone, if you try to imagine 50 years from now about those kids and the kids of these kids, because they won't be able to speak their native language, all they know from their parents was English and their kids were speaking English, they won't know who they are. And it's crisis for someone to live a life, but they don't know who they are. They speak a language that they don't know and they carry names that they don't know. It's a serious crisis and that needs to be averted by everyone. From family level, we need to start from family level and also institutional and structurally. From government level, they need to do something to enforce that we prioritize our own native languages in their diversity so that we preserve what belongs to us, what defines us, which is languages and culture. What was your budget? The budget from everything that we put was 2.5 million rand. We shot over three years from the people that contributed and deferred payments. The budget was 2.5 million rand. Thank you, Davison. You're welcome. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Pleasure. Pleasure. Asante, it's been me, Paul Oweri, speaking to uh, Davison from South Africa, the mecca of lost tongue. Don't forget to watch this on our YouTube channel, Mananchi Digital, and to read the story in the Citizen newspaper. Thank you.